Hi guys, it's Nicole and I've got another process video for you today and I'm going to talk about stretching heavily themed products. This is my second layout using the I Voted collection, which is the November release for Tracy Reed Designs. Basically each month I'm going to be creating two projects with whatever the new release is and then a third project with a... Um, kit or collection that I feel like using at the time. So that's going to kind of change month by month. But I know just from talking to some scrapbooking friends and stuff that I think a lot of people kind of shied away from the I Voted collection just because of the theme. So today I kind of just wanted to show an example of how you can kind of just really lean into the basics, the patterns and the colors of this collection to me still kind of scream very patriotic as well as in my case I'm going with a kind of super specific theme in that this is going to kind of be a cheer related layout but also parade themed so kind of to I don't I don't really know if you would consider those specific or not but when I was looking through all of the different products that were in I Voted, I love pattern paper. If you've been around my channel for a while, you guys know that's like my favorite product. So the paper choices were super easy. Um, when I was kind of planning out what I wanted to work on, my daughter's cheer team, their colors are like red and black and white. And then their cheer squad works heavily with the high school team as well so they were invited to march in the high school's homecoming parade and the high school's colors are blue so pretty much everybody that walked by me was in some form of red or blue so i figured that this would kind of be a good application and just kind of show how you can take a collection that upon first glance looks like oh I have to use some sort of political thing or a selfie of me voting in order to use this absolutely not you guys know I am a big proponent for you do you make things work for you and kind of think outside the box when it comes to stuff like that so I went through my sketches in my google drive and found one that I thought would really kind of be able to showcase some of the more I don't want to say generic but more of just the basic icons in this collection and one of the sketches that I chose had this border of a bunch of stars and I was like you know what this is going to be perfect so with the stripes on the left hand side here in the previous clip you guys show me kind of piecing them together as a reminder I don't have a wide format printer so anything that I print is going to be 11 inches at the most. In this case though, I printed the Traveler's Notebook size pattern papers. Saves a little bit of ink. I didn't need big pieces of pattern paper and the ones that I actually used were from when I was doing prints for the previous layout that I did with this, which I will go ahead and put that in the eye above. And so all that to say, my pieces of paper were eight inches long. So I just went ahead and made them kind of meet behind where I'm going to be placing a two by two photo and you'll never see it. One of the stripes I did go ahead and do some hand stitching, just did kind of tone on tone. And I don't normally pop up my photos, but in this instance with the stitching over there and knowing that I was going to be layering some stuff behind it I did want to go ahead and just bump this up a little bit I am currently obsessed with the one millimeter size thickness foam adhesive from scrapbook.com the original that I thought I was obsessed with for years turns out was two millimeters thick so once I got a hold of the one millimeter no turning back I actually just bought like five more packs because I was running out and I, I noticed that I reach for it more because it's not so thick. Now, I went through the way that the files are kind of set up is you've got, like if you wanted to print every sticker, 
they're spread out on three sheets, which is actually really easy. You just print the three sheets, you go ahead and put them in your silhouette or your Cricut, cut them. I didn't need all of those other pieces because again, I'm kind of in this instance ignoring all of the political phrases, all of the like voting phrases, those kinds of things. And I'm focusing more on the basics. So I went to the individual files in that folder picked a bunch of the stars, sized them to a bunch of different sizes, and one of them I made really big. I will put a link down below to the sketches that I used. Um, they're paid for, so I can't show the sketch, but it did have this big star area to be able to kind of layer your title and your journaling on, and I really liked that. So I did size one of them to be pretty big, it blurred the image just a tiny bit, but it didn't bother me. I think because the pattern is so simple with just those like circle borders, it worked out really well. And I'm going to fill in this like right border area with just a bunch of different stars. I like to kind of go big, medium, down to small. And I just kind of start almost auditioning different patterns and seeing if I like them next to each other. Sometimes if two busy patterns are just competing, I don't like to put them next to each other. I printed out a bunch of the solid color stars and, oh shoot, no, there's no solid color stars. Okay, so the solid color stars, what I did was I took one of the patterned stars and I draw, dragged and dropped the solid pattern paper onto the shape and basically it fills the star with the coordinating um, solid pattern paper from the pattern paper pack. I do have plans as I kind of go through this process of being on the design team of showing you guys like my screen when I'm doing little things like that that you might not be aware that you can do with print and cuts. I'm still kind of trying to learn some of this stuff myself. So I don't really feel like I'm the one to tell you how to do it just yet. <laughs> I'm still kind of finding my footing. Um, so if you have specific questions, leave them down below. I've kind of got like a running list of things that people have asked in my Facebook group and in the comments on my previous video. So I do have like plans at some point to sort of start including more like screen captures of what I'm doing. The more like medium and small size stars, I did put some foam be adhesive behind those just to kind of give them a little bit more dimension. And then I wanted to add tiny stars, but my silhouette ate like the tiny ones that I attempted to cut with it. And I didn't want to go through and die cut like manual die cut from the pattern papers in this instance. I just was kind of looking for something quick, something easy. Um, so basically I went through my enamel dots and sequins and I came across these iridescent stars and I decided to include those. To me it's a good like neutral, they kind of read as white and they're just going to add like another layer. Like I said, I like to kind of go when I'm doing like, and to me this is a scene. It's all stars but to me it's still a scene and so I work it the way that I would work a normal scene where I start big all the way down to teeny tiny and to me that's kind of what rounds out a good scene is all the different sizes and shapes. Now I've got the word parade cut out in the Uncle Sam alphabet which is part of the iVota collection and then I pulled in I'm trying to use these Simple Stories alphabet books a little bit more. I bought them years ago. They're super thin, so I kind of threw them back in my drawer because I was annoyed that they were super thin and I couldn't pop them up. I've been pulling them out lately and putting them on cardstock scraps and then just cutting them out on my trimmer and basically turning them into tile stickers that I can put foam adhesive behind. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting my title layered on here. I did purposely plan out like where my photos were going to fall. And when I was cropping them, I made sure that I found one 
decent one that you could see my daughter, like you could see her face. She got closer to me. All the other ones were blurry because they were moving and I was kind of panicked. Um, and I kind of intentionally made sure to leave some stuff going on on the right hand side of the photo that doesn't have anything to do with like my daughter. It's other girls in the squad. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with those girls, but they're going to get some letters layered on top of them because my focus is my daughter marching in the parade. So some of the words are going to cross over into some of the people. And then the photo underneath it's got some like open sky. So I tend to look for areas like that in my photos where it's going to be okay to layer something on it. And having everything kind of cross over each other and different areas like the title and the star and the journaling all these things kind of touching each other and sort of sharing space with each other I think is what I would kind of describe like my method to clustering I think this is something that people question a lot and they ask for advice on is they they're like I don't you know my clusters look weird I don't know what to do my kind of suggestion with that is to look and see do all of your different little pieces, are they sort of spread out in individual or are they slightly touching other things? And having them kind of touch and cross into different areas might help you a little bit. But like I've always said, I am not the expert on anything by any means. Don't don't come to me for cluster help. <laughs> I am out here just doing my best as well. And a lot of times when I'm picking sketches, I will pick one that is not only is it going to work overall for my photos and like what I've got planned paper and embellishment wise, but I will kind of look and see if the cluster areas are something that can really kind of guide me. And a lot of times I will follow them super, like super strict because it looks good on the sketch. So I know it's going to look good on my layout. Sometimes I'll change it up because maybe my journaling is more, maybe it's less, maybe my title is longer, maybe it's shorter. Just kind of depends on what's going on in the moment. I am slightly out of frame. I forgot to zoom back out, but basically I took one of the labels that I had printed. I'm going to stamp the date on it cut off the right side of it and I'm going to attach it to another blank area on that third photo which you can see it tucked down here on the bottom and it's just kind of nestled in under one of the girl's feet. So I hope that this gives you a kind of an idea of how to look at something that when you see like the marketing photos looks super specific and you're thinking well I like the overall look of it but I'm not sure how I would how I would use it kind of maybe narrow down what you're looking at and look at more of the basics and stuff like that. So with that, I'm going to leave you guys here. If you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to go ahead and join me and here's some more videos and I will catch you guys next time.